This video is going to have a look at true bearings, explain how we calculate the true bearings, and look at the correct method for writing true bearings. So bearings are used to locate the position of objects or the direction of a journey on a two-dimensional plane. So when we are looking at bearings and looking at directions, normally we would look at a compass and we would use north, east, south and west to help us be able to provide directions between two points or look at the bearings as to where we are going. True bearings are a little bit different to the normal compass. When we are giving our true bearings, we always give it in relation to the north line. So true bearings is the angle that is formed between the direction that we are going or the direction we are looking at and the north line. So we're starting at north and we are rotating around in a clockwise direction. So our true bearings measurements will go from zero up to 316 degrees as it works its way around a compass. So true bearings are always measured in the clockwise direction from the north-south line. When we are writing true bearings, we write them always in all three digits. So that is important to remember, especially when we have a measurement under 100 degrees, we still place a zero in front of our angle size to ensure that we have three digits. So for example, if the angle measured is 20 degrees clockwise from the north-south line, then the bearing is going to be written as 0, 2, 0. So remembering to put the zero in front. And when we are using true bearings, when we are putting in our unit of measurement, we put in our degrees and then we put a T. So our measurement is, for this example, is 20 degrees true north. So remembering to always use a couple of T after our degrees to indicate that we are measuring in true bearings. So let's have a look at an example of how do we write some true bearings based on angles provided. So for each of the examples, we want to write the true bearing measurement. So having a look at A, and when we're doing true bearings, we always start looking at the north first and the angle that our line points with the north. So here for A, starting with my north line and looking at the angle to I reach my direction of travel, that angle is going to be 25 degrees. So when I write my true bearing, it is going to be 0 to 5 degrees true north. Having a look at example B, again we're starting with our north line and looking at the angle from our north line down to our direction of travel. And this time we need to calculate what that angle size is going to be based on the information provided. So I know my first quadrant is going to be 90 degrees and then I've got an additional 60 degrees. So 90 plus 60 is equal to 150. So my true bearings measurement is going to be 150 degrees true north. So looking at example C, and again starting with the north direction, and you're looking at the angle between the north direction and the direction you are traveling or pointing towards. So looking around, I'm looking for the size of that angle here. So my first quadrant is 90, my second quadrant is going to be 90, and then I've got an additional 50 degrees that I need to add on. So 90 plus 90 plus 50 equals 230. So my answer is going to be 230 degrees true north. And finishing up with example D, again, you need to be starting at your true north line and then working your way around to hit the direction you're traveling. So here we're looking at our angle size formed here. So we've got 90 in the first quadrant, 90 in the second, 90 in the third. So my angle size is going to be bigger than 270. Then I would need to add on my additional angle in the fourth quadrant. An alternative to that would be to start at 360 and take off the 70 degrees and that will also get me to my true bearings angle. So 360 minus 70 is equal to 290. 
So the size of my angle in true bearings is going to be 290 degrees true north. So that is some examples of how do we measure and write our answers using true bearings.